All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Doc Severson, and um, thank you very much, David, for inviting me once again to Timing Research and the Trade Out Loud, the Friendsgiving today. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about zero-day options trading strategies. Again, my name is Doc Severson, and you may or may not know who I am. Uh, if you've heard of me before, it's probably as a contributor for Options MD or TheoTrade or Doc's Trading Tools or the original options linebacker once upon a time. Uh, the current services that I run are readyset.trade and then readysetcrypto.com as well too. You might have also seen my books, which are Fractal Energy Trading, Four Simple Rules to Profit in Any Market in Any Time Frame, that's on Amazon, as well as the Hacking the Holy Grail book, which is uh, the Trader's Guide to Cracking the Code of Profitability. Both of those books are available on Amazon. And my specialties are Fractal Price Analysis, options and future strategies, uh, trading mindset, because I needed to hack my own skull first uh, to become profitable. And so that's kind of my journey through that. And overall, what I try to do is this is this can be a very complex business, but it doesn't need to be. So I try to simplify everything that I can. So that's who I am. And what we're going to do today, my purpose in the next few minutes here is I want to see the little guy win without getting stepped on, without making you feel like you have to join some kind of wild subreddit and do pump and dump stuff. There's still edge that's out there in the market. You just have to know how to find it. And to me, the zero day option strategies are one of the best natural edges that I've seen. I've been doing this now since 2004. So coming up on 20 years of doing this, and this is one of the best edges that I've seen, which I don't think is going to go away anytime soon. So my purpose today is I want to show you about this. I want to let you know about this edge and let you decide at the end of this, if this is something that you want to do uh, going forward, if this is something for you. All right, ready, set, let's go. So why we're here today, probably for most people is we're trying to set ourselves up for financial freedom. What I want to impress upon you, though, is that using yesterday's methods won't work anymore. Let's see if some of these look familiar. So we all want to grow the pile, right? So the old paradigm of investing was to continue to build your pile of assets until someday you have enough to write your own check. And then what you can do is live off the interest. If you accumulated enough assets, you could safely live off the interest without dipping into your principal. And the old standard was to build up a million bucks and then live off 50K a year at 5% APR. Well, that's not working out so well because the problem is that we don't have, even with the recent inflation, we still have 1.6% interest rate. So the savers of the world out there are getting crushed still to this day. So making reasonable and meaningful income on 1.6% is not going to cut it. And this is because I think we all know why this is happening because of the helicopter drop in money and it and everything else that's happening. And we're watching things around us just spin out of control left and right. So using those same old techniques in today's paradigm just doesn't work. Now, there are some other alternatives to saving interest. Obviously, you can get into annuities, which lock you in for years to receive a tiny rate. Bond yields are correlated to the interest rates. So they're not so good right now. Stock dividends can be upwards of 7% or like in this example, 20%, but you have to pay for it. So for you to get a decent dividend on a stock, usually it's inversely correlated to the performance of that stock. It becomes almost golden handcuffs. So the usual alternatives to creating income absolutely stink in today's environment. This is how and why we need to do something different. We need to shake things up, think outside the box. This means that most are not prepared for this new reality. You can follow the old paradigm of growing your pile of assets, but being able to make money on your money is no longer there, at least using the old style of techniques. So retires, retirees are going to be shredding through their principal in no time and wondering what changed, even though this has been happening for the past two decades. So in the words of the eternal private Hudson, what do we do now, man? Game over, right? So this is where a lot of people are at. They're thinking, well, game over, and I'm just going to, you know, cry in my beer. Well, to me, 
we need to be focusing on something new, income to the rescue. So income is what we once received through interest, dividends, bond yields. How can we replace it? Well, let's break things down. First of all, we got two different forms of income. First of all, passive income is that which you earn without active participation. So this could be interest or dividends, or as we're going to show you, other methods of creating income from that. And also we have active income. Now the usual example for active income is requires participation and effort to earn income. So a job or active trading will produce active income if you do it right. So these are what we're going to focus on, passive and active income, and we're gonna just use different tools. Now, can we do this with stocks? Well, after this 12, 13 year run, Stocks are expensive due to Fed policy. The market is way up. As of this morning, it's up 603% from the lows in 2009. Ouch. What we got instead of the Fed getting 2% was we got this massive asset inflation since they started doing QE back in 2010. Nice intent, but not the same consequences, right? So we can also buy the market leaders such as Amazon or Tesla. But these are, you know, four-figure stocks. Just buying a few shares, let alone 100 that you can write options against them, is going to require a massive amount of capital. So how can you create income trading in and out of these things? It's going to be difficult. So you could day trade stocks, but we are all familiar with this pattern day trader limitation. Unless you have at least 25 grand, this is going to create some problems for you. So stocks are not going to be a difficult or not not going to be really a viable way of just trading stocks alone of creating income. So we can trade options. And hopefully you've heard of options before. Options we can create passive income, we can turn ourselves into an insurance company where we're selling the risk premium to buyers and then managing our risk on the side. We can also pursue active income. We can look for short-term opportunities to either buy or sell options using the leverage of options to more efficiently use capital. That's mostly what we're gonna be talking about today. So my assumption here is since we're at a timing research and a trade out loud session, I'm gonna skip the usual background on options and get right into the strategies if that's okay with you guys. So. What we're gonna do for the rest of this session is how do we generate active income using zero days to expiration option strategies? Okay, here we go, off we go. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna set something realistic. Let's talk about realism here. Let's not talk about these over puffed up returns and things like that. Let's focus on doing something that we can all accomplish instead of saying, hey, let's make $10,000 a day, which is possible but not likely for most people until you're ready for that. So earning hundred bucks a day doesn't sound like much of a goal, especially with vendors screaming about crushing trades and making thousands a day, but you've got to start somewhere. I think you'd all agree with that. You gotta start somewhere. Even if it's 10 bucks a day, you gotta start somewhere. Did you know that if you got, if you started today and every day for the next year, you got 1% better every year. Do you realize, I'm sorry, every day, 1% better every day. Do you think you could get 1% better at something every day? You don't, it doesn't sound like much, right? You'd be 37 times better at what you do. And so that's what I want to impress upon you is that the way to success in the market is to pick one thing, achieve specialty in that, and then slowly, progressively, methodically get better at that every single day. All it takes is just chipping away at that stone every single day. You start with a huge block of marble and eventually you get David, right? Not that David, the other one. So let's pick one thing, start with a modest goal and continue to improve on it every day. Trading zero DTE options allows us to get lots of trades and potential improvement over the span of a year. And I'll show you my results here in a few minutes. Now, the way that we do this is through the income pyramid. We use the blended approach. So a lot of these trades down here, like non-directional index trades, things like that, these are passive income trades that we use. And we'll also use the same type of strategies on equities as well as index. 
products. So as we get up to directional options and futures, this is where we're using smaller amounts of capital because we're taking a little bit more risk. These are the active option strategies. Now your approach, everybody's gonna be different. And this is where it's important for you to understand yourself. Everybody's gonna have a different combination of capital and everybody's gonna have a different combination of, well, capital, knowledge, and time available. So everybody has got a different starting level of capital. And believe it or not, just because you have a big, huge account, you have seven figures to play with, doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be any better at this. So the people, conversely, the people with smaller accounts doesn't necessarily mean that the deck is stacked against you if you get better at something every day. You're also gonna have a certain starting point in terms of your knowledge and what you have available to you. The more knowledge that you have, the more alternatives, the more things that you can pursue. And of course, time, everybody thinks that, man, if I could just trade all day long, I'd have all the money that I needed. That's not necessarily true either. It's gonna be a combination of this. And somewhere in the middle is the magic combination for you with your certain combination of capital, the current knowledge that you have, the knowledge that you think that you can acquire, as well as the available time that you have or the time that you want to dedicate to this. To me, I think that there is a sweet spot in there that the less time that you spend on something when it comes to trading, probably the better off that you are. There's only so much that you can, there's only so much focus that you can provide during a trading day. So that's your approach to this. So is it easier with larger accounts? It's certainly easier with passive income. You can just write a lot of puts and do covered calls and then call it a day. It's simple to do, but not everybody's in that situation, right? So what we're going to focus on today is more about the active income. So if we do these things three times a week, we can avoid the small account BDT lockdown issues as well, right? We're flat at the end of the day. Even if we open and close, that's only three times. And we don't necessarily have to do three trades a week if we don't want to. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to be shooting for a goal of earning something consistent every day, whether it's $10 a day, $100 a day, 1000 bucks a day, whatever moves the needle for you. So let's talk about zero DTE options. What are they? These are options that expire today. Now, weekly options have been around since I believe it's 2005 with originally through the SPX and then we started to get more pervasive throughout the equities market. So typically we're gonna see these options and every week we're gonna have an option that expires on that Friday. So here's one that expires on Microsoft for next Friday. And then the week after that on a Friday and each one of these is a little F for a Friday. So that's typically what you're gonna find with most equities is you're gonna find these weekly options. And it's great because it used to be that you go into the option chain and all you had were these monthly options. And, and that was crazy, right? So you just didn't have much to play with. You had to write these, write these and hold positions for a long period of time. And now with the, how pervasive that we're getting these expiration dates gives you more alternatives. So we could have a zero day option with these, but we'd have to wait until every Friday. But the S&P 500 has three weekly expirations per week. Right now you're seeing one for 17 November. This is for Wednesday. You're also seeing this, this one doesn't count because this is the monthly AM settlement. Here's the Friday, here's, here's Monday over here. This is next Monday, here's next Wednesday. Here's next Friday as well, too. So you can see three times a week, we have options that expire here. And I would say probably before too much longer, we're going to have Tuesdays and Thursdays as well. Sometimes we have more than this because we have quarterly options that, that come along and sometimes they'll come along on a Tuesday or a Thursday. And it, to some degree, there is a proxy here. This is a Thursday option. It stops trading on Thursdays. This is the AM settled monthly. So there's a lot of different expirations. And again, I think this is going to be more pervasive. And in five years, we may be coming back to this and saying, oh, that's the 9 AM option. That's the 11 AM option. There's probably going to be intraday options that expire if there's a market for something like that, which I think there will be. So we'll be back talking about that at that point. 
So the SPX has three weekly expirations per week. It's currently the most that's out there, but we also have the spiders and the queues. They do the same thing as well, too. There's also the NDX, which is the NASDAQ 100. Big contract, but it's kind of illiquid. It doesn't have very much volume to it, and I don't recommend that people trade it. So I would stick to the S&P for right now because that's the big enchilada, the big, you know, 500-pound gorilla in the space. The great thing about these things is that when you look at the expiration, say this is the closing bell here, that option is like a melting ice cube that you're holding in your hand as you're walking towards a raging fire. So if you, if you consider the raging fire to be at the closing bell, the closer that you walk towards that fire, holding that ice cube in your hand, the more radiant heat it's going to pick up and the faster it's going to decay as a square of the distance towards it. So the closer that we get to expiration, the closing bell, the faster it decays. And so you'll, you'll get an option with a certain amount of extrinsic and intrinsic value at the beginning of the day. And you know that by the end of the day, that option will have no extrinsic value whatsoever. There's no time value left. There's no premium left. It all evaporates and the option stops trading. That's a huge advantage for us to know. Now, these are very sharp instruments. What I usually tell people is, look, if you're new to something like this, let's say if you wanted to learn how to hit a baseball. Around me, there were always these baseball parks where these cages were the automated pitching machines, and you put in a dollar and you'd get, you know, 10 balls thrown at you at varying different speeds. And you could pick the 50 mile an hour cage, you could pick the 60 mile an hour cage, you can even go up to the 90 mile an hour cage. Well, it doesn't make sense for you to start off the 90 mile an hour cage because you're just not going to get any success. You're not going to get any feeling of confidence and things are just going to happen too fast. Better to start with something a little slower and work your way up to the speed of this. Start at that 50 mile an hour cage and work your way up as you become more successful with handling these things. And you'll find that these these zero DTE options are not that difficult either, but they're kind of difficult to start with. So if you're brand new to this, I would understand the concept behind this and maybe start with something a little slower. So learn these concepts on longer term trades first and then work your way up to them. Okay, so those are what zero DTE options are. So we're gonna look at these on the S&P. They expire three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we can write strategies against them. Okay, so what kind of strategies can we do? Well, a couple of them. First of all, we can just do long options. This is the way that most people start trading options. You know, somebody finds Wall Street bets and finds out what stocks are supposed to be doing, and then they start to read about people doing call options and put options and things like that. So that's very natural to start with that. Unfortunately, it's the very most difficult way to win a trade is with a long option for a host of reasons, right? It's, a, it's, it's the simplest way to, to enter the trade and the most difficult way to get a positive result. So the pros and cons of this is we could actually do long options during that zero day. We can actually do those. Now, there are some advantages and disadvantages to this. So obviously, disadvantage is we've got something. It's a wasting asset. It's about to disappear. So the time value of this option is about to go zero by the closing bell. That means that you don't want to dawdle. You want to get in, get your fair share, get the heck out of there. So there are some interesting benefits, though, with this. They're very responsive, and this is due to gamma, which is way beyond our scope of discussion today. But it will explode as it becomes in the money or at the money. And it's a great way to deal with trend days. If you have a trend day, kind of like today would be a trend day, today's a trend day. You know, the market started low, kind of bumbled around, and then all of a sudden took off into the afternoon. Today's a trend day. So this is a good example of something that you might want to use like a long option for something like that. Now, one great thing about these versus like using futures contracts, because most people if they've been trading for a while, they understand that a futures contract is really a very pure way of taking a directional trade. But the problem with it is unless you're good at risk management, you might get 
you know, you're setting up a bracket order on there and you might be stopped out. Next thing you know, the thing takes off. So allowing you the use of an option, a long option like this allows you to kind of relax because you know that the most you're going to risk on this trade, if you get into this option here, is going to be $63. That's it. So most that you're going to you're going to lose on this trade. If it just completely turns around and you're una unable to get out of the trade, 63 bucks is the worst that you're going to do, right? Unlike a futures contract where people panic, they wipe the stop out, they go, well, I know it's going to bounce from here. Next thing you know, you're down $3,000. Not so with this. This is the most you can lose. So fixed risk is actually a big advantage towards this. You can also play this trick where you can estimate the value of this. So if the current price is, let's say, 314, so it's 314, the price is somewhere around in this area, right? If the price made a one-point gain to 315, now we're talking about the spiders here, so that's a 10-point notional S&P move, then it would be one point in the money the 313 calls are now. So the option would gain from, let's say, we're looking at this option, and let's say we spent 84 cents on it, if it moves from, if the price moves from 314 to 315, then what we can assume is that this is the same as the option moving in this direction. So it's gonna be worth, and this is one point, so it's gonna be moved from 314 to 313, it's gonna be worth $1.38, which is a 54 cent gain. So if you didn't catch it the first time, catch this on a replay and kind of walk through it because this is an old market maker trick of estimating like how much an option would be worth based on the amount of move that you see. Now, this is not an easy way to make money with active income. So the win of these trades, you have to get so many things right. There's not that many trend days. More often than not, we are in a range day. You've got to get the direction right, the velocity right, identification of a trend day. You've got to get the right duration for this. These trades look simple in the rear view mirror but few can do these consistently. So I prefer to do things that it's easier to win at. I like winning, right? So I'm gonna pursue strategies that allow me to basically making money from doing nothing. The price gets in a range day and I can jump on it. One strategy that we use for this is an iron condor. You may not know this, but there's several different types of iron condors that are out there. Let me walk you through different types. Now an iron condor, the a condor, as you know, is a big bird with a huge wingspan. So that kind of talks about what a trade looks like with this. So with an iron condor, like the one that I have listed here, as long as the price stays within this range and does nothing, then eventually what this will do is this purple line will grow into that and will create a profit for you. So it's a neat trade that makes money for the price basically staying in a range. Again, there's different types of iron condors. This is the way that I label them. High probability is generally greater than 80% probability of success. This means that your wings are set up for a delta of about 10 or 0.1, which means there's a 10% probability of the price being uh, hit, hit that short strike. And if you multiply them, that means an 80% probability of success. So these are generally... You know, you win a lot, but the problem is when you lose, you could lose a lot unless you are good at risk management. A low probability is actually starting off with a 50% probability of success. It's closer to the price, but, but there is some advantages to this. A one expected move. So if you're familiar with the guys from Tasty Trade and so forth, a lot of times they'll set up an iron condor with a width of one expected move, plus and minus, which gives you about a 68.2% probability of success. And then there's the iron butterfly, which is a little bit of a hybrid, where we're actually turning an iron condor into a butterfly. And we'll talk a little bit about this one, because this is one that I'm, this is my favorite right now to use. So again, the high probability iron is, it gives you a lot of width, gives you a lot of width because you're setting up these short strikes that maybe, you know, like a 10 delta or maybe a 0.05 delta way out there. You know, you can get really, really wide on these things and give yourself a huge probability of success 
at the cost of a lot of risk. That's the, the converse. So many like to even use technical analysis and kind of leg into each side of these as the price moves around. So it's, it's a viable strategy. The downside to this is that you're going to be spending the majority of your day to, this is the classic picking up nickels in front of a steamroller type of trade, because it's going to take you all day to earn a very small profit from the trade. Okay, secondly, is the low probability iron condor. We're actually making this a one-to-one -one reward to risk. So the risk here is the same as the reward. So we've pulled the legs in, and some people might say, my gosh, why would you do that? That's crazy. Why would you reduce the probability of the trade? Well, it's faster, and the risk management is much better. So this is a trade that you could literally walk away from and come back in a few hours, you set up your profit targets, and the worst happens is that you take a full loss on it, you're okay with that because you can size the position correctly so that if it, if it does come down here and take a full loss, but you can't do that with, you can't do that with the high probability ones. You cannot accept and absorb a full loss on those because you won't be trading for very long. It's gonna wipe out every single profit that you've done you know, you can have nine straight profits and the 10th will come along and wipe you out, put you back to zero. So talk about Sisyphus, there you go. So with a low probability, these are a little bit better, but you have to be more selective about when to enter these. There's also the expected move or one standard deviation, Iron Condor, there's a 68.2% probability that the price will stay within your area there. So it's a very hybrid Iron Condor. It's a compromised in every way. You can identify the one sigma by going out to, I believe it's actually like a 16 delta. So somewhere around 16 to 20 delta, something like that usually will work out pretty well for you. Okay, and now we're going to go to the iron butterfly. This is my favorite version to use when volatilities are a little bit lower because what it allows me to do is to get in and get out very quickly. And I value my time. I'm not one. I used to do this. I used to sit in front of screens all day long from the pre-market all the way through till maybe six o'clock at night, watching price action, watching the screens, trading futures, stuff like that. And I found that it wasn't necessarily a good use of time. It was not as effective as I wanted it to be. So now everything that I'm doing now is all about maximizing my time, being more effective with my time, being more efficient with it. Use it for things, living, you know, going hit, get golf balls if I want to do something like that. Go out in the, uh, and sail during the day. Do whatever I want to. Get your work done in the morning and then use your time more efficiently in the afternoon. So that's a smaller range to work with with this, but faster profits. So again, just doing a, a quick bake off here, compare and contrast with these. Which one is better? There's no better or best. There's only the one that works for you. So I don't want to get into the religion of which one is best or not. But I can, I can say the one that works best for me right now based on my schedule and what I want to do is to get into a trade which creates 100 bucks in about 30 to 60 minutes. The downside is the width to work with. So I have to be very selective to this. Do I have to be that selective with these ones? No. So with a high probability... You can do these pretty much just about any day. It's just that some are going to work and some are not going to work. The low probability, you have to be a bit more selective. Same with the expected move. We'll show some examples of this in a minute. Okay, so exits and management. Anybody can enter an iron condor zero DTE trade. The skill comes and the profits will come as you learn to exit and or not even enter based on what you're seeing. So a great offense is your best defense, or a great defense is your best offense too. So avoiding trend days is key. A trend day is where you get the price moving around a little bit in the morning, and then it explodes, and it just takes off. And we don't see that many of them. There's only you know 10 to 20% of the time do we see a trend day. Most of the time, the, park, the market's just flying around the place, just doing not much of anything. So this gives us more opportunities looking for these range days. 
Something else to consider, don't let a profitable trade turn into a loser, as you'll likely gravitate towards shorter, shorter hold time trades with experience. So I was Mr. Way Out of the Money Iron Condor 15 years ago. And, you know, that led to a lot of stress, quite honestly, like a lot of overnight genuflections were, please, 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 just today just go down you know like <laughs> and you start talking to the market and start you know being psychotic things like that so what i found was even though initially it looks like you get a higher probability of success i found that the the corrosiveness of holding those positions overnight uh, was not healthy for me so again what i found was what worked for me is to get in get my fair share get out reduce the whole time now, don't forget with the zero DTEs that if there's no setup today, there's two more days remaining every week. So this is nice about this thing is that you don't have to sit there and go, oh, my God, I got to get in right now. You don't have this feeling of, you know, the train's running away without you. There's always Wednesday. There's always Friday coming along. There's always next week as well, too. There's 150 opportunities every year to get into one of these trades. And again, I, I believe that can be multiplied if you want to look at different assets or different underlyings as well, too. I tend to just focus on the S&P. That's what a zero DTE iron condor is. Now, I want to show you something that's quite a bit different. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but calendar spreads can be used as well, too. What is a calendar spread? Well, this is where you're selling something short term, you're selling something that expires today, but at the same time, you're buying an option, you're buying an insurance option, which is at least a week out. And that is, that's your hedge against movement. So you're selling the front option and buying the back option. This is why they call it a time spread or calendar spread. All right, what's the edge here? The edge here, if you think about it, Here's your near-term option. Here's the option that expires today in red. And here's today, and you know that by the end of today, it's going to expire. Whereas that long option that you bought, which is a week later, it doesn't expire until next week. And so if with all things being the same, right, if you hold all variables constant, if you just have that time value decay, that short option is going to decay to zero that long option will retain the vast majority of its value today. And that edge will never go away, folks. That edge will never go away. It will never disappear, no matter how much time. You have to keep the edge, though. It's not as easy as it sounds, right? So what are the risks? The risks are that you can get trend days, step in front of a trend. You don't want to do that because, as you, as you see, the risk skirts tend to go down very quickly. And shrinkage is always a problem. Shrinkage happens when you have volatility moving in the wrong direction. And what happens is this whole thing will disappear. And that's not good. So the whole, the whole uh, pattern that we're looking here, their whole risk per diagram actually starts to shrink down and your trade goes underwater. So it's not good. So you have to understand under what conditions would this happen? So if we do step in front of a trend, what we can do is we can double this. We can adjust these. We can turn a single calendar into a double, which will also probably double the time that you have to hold into it, doubles the capital that you have. So there's no free lunch here, but you can adjust for a trend. You can turn a single into a double. And it works very, very effectively, especially on an upside attack. Now, exits are also something that you have to be very precise with. So what I've done is I've built my own kind of trade management sheet here. So that calculates exactly where to get out, where to make adjustment points, things like that. So it turns out to be, it's, it's a very mechanical type of trade once you get into it, which is relaxing. It's nice to know that I don't have to make a decision to be right or wrong about something. I can just follow the numbers, which is very attractive towards using a calendar spread. So which are better, condors or calendars? I always say that if you learn how to trade 
a calendar spread, you're going to be a better trader down the road because you're going to learn to think in more two dimensionally, at least, if not three dimensionally. So iron condors are easier qualification. You get more distance, more of a hands-off trade, those kind of things. But calendar spreads are much more tied in with volatility movement. So there's a lot more variables to pre-qualify before you get into the trade and say, okay, thumbs up, this is a really good one here. And once you're in the trade, you'll have more things that can either work in your favor or work against you. But the big advantage here is if you get it right, these are much faster even than the iron condors. Okay, big advantage here, calendar spreads versus iron condors if you get everything right. So it's got to it's got to be pre-qualified very precisely. But it will make you a better trader if you learn how to trade these. Okay, now the usual question I get around this time is like, okay, sounds good, Doc. What indicators do we use for something like this? You got to have some special indicators to use this type of strategy, right? Well, not really. So what I will say is, can we use studies? Not on your life. There's no lagging study like an RSI or moving average or some type of ribbon study or something like that. No lagging study. And you guys all know that most studies, the majority of them are lagging. They're just lagging derivatives of price, time, and volume. And none of these will allow you to help anticipate or forecast intraday price action potential for a zero DTE trade. Technical analysis is for giving you a framework with which you can make decisions. It is not for predicting the future. Don't make that rookie mistake. So we have to learn how to use price to frame in the battlefield. Price will never lie to you. It's never lagging. Price is right there. This is what the professionals use. So you may as well learn how to do it right off the bat here. So price gaps can be very useful for us if we're trading intraday. So the S&P will gap up or down just about every day. And as it gaps, we can see whether or not it's closing a gap or just ignoring a gap. If it's gap and go, you might expect to see. So if, if it never fills the, today's gap, you might expect it to see a trend day. And look out if you're playing something like a condor or calendar. But that may be good if you're playing something like a direct option, like a long put or call. There's also the opening range. This is something that we look at every day. This is the first 30 minutes of price action. What you see on, a, and I'll show you an example here in a second, what you see on a typical day where it's range bound is it sets up the opening range and then it stays within the range. So this is kind of a typical range day here that we typically see in the market where kind of most of the time it stays within the opening range, tries to break out, can't do it, it's range bound. So this is where we use condors or calendars. So I wait for the opening range to set up. And then I say, does the market want to be range bound or does it want to trend? And usually in that first, I'd say 45 minutes, we have an answer to that question. Usually we know by that. Here's an example from this morning that we saw. Market started off the opening range, moving to the upside, consolidates, blows above the top of the opening range into the late morning. Today's been a trend day as of this morning, and I think it's still continuing to do that. So we can use this opening range to really understand what's happening with the price. We can also use the expected move. So here is the, here's the opening range right here. Here's the extension of the opening range as we draw it out. But here's the plus and minus expected move above and below the price. These are the statistical targets for one standard deviation of price movement based on the opening bell. And we look at this, this number is available through most broker platforms or you can calculate it yourself using the at the money straddle and the out of the money strangle. You can derive it and apply it towards your chart. And you'd be amazed at how often the price will react once it gets either to down to the lower expected move or to the upper expected move. It reacts like there's a whole lot of demand down there or there's a whole lot of supply up there. And rare is the day when we just see it blow right through the expected move. It happens, but not that often. 
So this is a second set of price barriers that we can set up the trade around. And we can engineer a trade around these price barriers. Okay, so I would say keep it simple, right? You can't predict the future, do the best job that you can to avoid being trucked by a trend day if you're gonna sell something like an iron condor or a calendar spread. But you can't win from the sidelines, you'll definitely lose if you wait for everything to feel good. This is what a lot of traders will do. They're trading not to lose instead of trading to win. These trades show up three times a week, so get back and get in the fight. Okay, so that's, we've gone over the strategies, we've gone over the charting. Let me show you a couple of examples here. And the first, we haven't done that many calendar spreads for a while. We did a lot of them back in 2020 because we had very overstated implied volatility. There was a huge edge. We had these huge calendar spreads that we could write during last summer. Okay, so there's a certain cost to these. <laughs> this was a seven minute hold time to make $125. That's pretty quick, right? Seven minute hold time, 27% return on risk. You know, you look at something like that and the first reaction most people have is, well, why didn't you hold it all the way up until here? And then you would have made 1500. It's not the way I trade. I wanna get in, get my fair share, get out, go live my life, right? Go do something more productive than staring at a screen all day long. Usually there's a, a point of diminishing returns after which the longer you stare at a screen, you start giving back money to the market. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, learned from it, don't do that anymore. So get in, get your fair share, get out. That's a calendar spread. Here's an example of an expected move iron condor. This one, we're in and out in about 78 minutes. It does take a little longer for something like this. If we're trading a little wider iron condor, it's gonna take longer. So. The implication is that because it's wider, it's safer. Well, that's true. It will acquire, it will handle more price movement within there. So this one was like 70 points wide, 70 points wide on an iron condor, which you would assume would handle most daily ranges. Okay, but it, you have to wait over an hour to get $50 profit or 15% return on risk. Okay, depends on what you want to do. Here's a low probability iron condor. This one's a little bit more narrow. It's a one-to-one -one reward to risk. And this one took 107 minutes. So a little over an hour and a half to make 50 bucks on this. So again, a little bit slower. So I got a couple of iron butterfly examples here. This one, we were in for 57 minutes, made $100 per contract. This was a two contract trade. So a couple hundred dollars. And you're just looking at an opening credit, closing debit. That's what you're looking for. So here's another one that we took on Friday. And I included the price chart here so you could kind of see what we were looking at. Here's where we got in. Actually, the trade that we did in the room, we were in and out of in six minutes. It was kind of crazy. Six minutes. And I got out here before the price started to run. And so this one was we're risking $300 for two contracts. Whole time was 42 minutes for $55 a contract. So this is an example. I could have made $50 in six minutes and I was holding out for $100 per contract. If you want to hold out for a bigger profit, you have to stay in there a little longer. But the other thing is too, before get out before it starts to run, which is what I did. So still a reasonable return of 18% on R. Okay, so these are these are trades that we're doing right now. We're doing not, we're probably not doing three times a week. We're looking for them three times a week. Usually we get one or two opportunities every week, depending on what the price is doing. So our performance with the iron butterflies alone, this is my tracking sheet. We've put on 95 trades. We've won 92 of them this year, which is kind of crazy, right? I like that. I don't like losing trades. So at 96.8%, performance on that the profit factor is ridiculous which is six for every for every dollar we lose we make six dollars so by all means what i should be doing is trading you know 20 contracts of this but again i like to keep things quiet i like to keep things you know get my fair share and i'm good with that i don't like drama so that's our performance with the iron butterflies 
Okay, so those are some recent examples. Let me wrap things up for you guys here. So to me, there's only one narrow path to success. So we talked about this kind of journey that I've taken you guys on. So everybody knows about to grow your pile. You want to create a pile that you can grow on it. But I think you have to use different tools than the old, you know, interest rates and bond yields and dividends and things like that. This just aren't working like they used to. So focus on creating income through passive and active income from options. Those are today's tools. They've been really stated the art tools for the past 20 years plus. Again, use options. They offer limited risk, high probability trading strategies. Don't tell any, you know, don't listen to the same old crap like options are risky. Well, so are power tools if you don't know what you're doing, but would you build a house with a hammer and a crosscut saw? You know, like you could do it, but it would take you forever and you'd be worn out. Power tools are so much faster. Options are the power tools of the stock market. The cost is knowledge. You got to know what you're doing. Make a hundred bucks a day or something, something that makes a difference to you, whether it's $10 a day, hundred dollars a day, don't try to climb the, the mountain of financial independence all at once. So just because some service is showing you how they make $20,000 a day in a SIM trading account doesn't mean that you're going to be able to do it right off the bat, or nor should you try to do it right off the bat, unless you have your risk management and control. Focus on a repeatable, modest goal so that you can gain confidence and mastery. Let the compounding magic work for you. Learn about zero-day options. They have a six and a half hour lifespan. They're going to be a little longer coming uh, pretty soon here in a few weeks. They display very specific characteristics for time decay and gamma that can be used in an edge for short and long option trades. Learn about iron condors. Find the style of iron condor that meets your requirements. Master the application of it from entry, defense, and exit techniques. Learn about calendar spreads. Those of you that already understand verticals and condors, add calendar spreads and understand how to use them and when to use them. That will teach you how to analyze and think in several different dimensions at once. More edge, but more capital, more skill is required. These are best for really low volatility markets, which we may be getting back into again here. And again, don't forget to trade small to begin with. Start with the spiders or the Qs. At one-tenth the notional capital required as the SPX or NDX, no matter how large your account, this is where you should start. Repetition is the mother of skill. Okay, that's my narrow path to success and putting it all together. So let me summarize everything and I'll let you guys go here. Where do you go from here? So you may have listened to everything that I've said here and it's okay, that sounds good, but how do I get started? Well, you're gonna have a map to get there. This is what I believe. I'm, I'm a big guy in the GPS. So I think you need a map to get there. Ready to trade is our community of traders that seek high probability, low risk trades in the options and futures markets, seeking to earn $100 a day or whatever makes sense to them, right? So just you know, nibbling away, learning incremental skills and getting better at that. We provide the structure and guidance to show how to quickly come up to speed on these zero day strategies, plus all of the other intangibles that are necessary for success, right? It's one way, it's something to earn money, it's yet another thing to keep it. And we do that through goals and systems. Goals are for people who care about winning once. Systems are for people who care about winning repeatedly. So what we do is a lot of different things here. So we have a live daily trading room. We call the elite service. We do a newsletter five times a week. We do a, have a live online community. Every time we make a trade, we publish it out to the community, live trade notifications and adjustments. We have multiple trading courses on strategies and techniques strategy briefs, research notes, probably more than you, than you want to, to be reading on it any particular day, right? So we've got this course now for the zero DTE options. It's one specific course for $99.99. And we're doing this on sale right now. If you go out to the site, it's going to be $199 off of the street, but we're doing this sale today for half price for $99.99 and includes everything here that you ne need to know to be able to trade this. So 
Let me show you, first of all, what our overall performance is on the site. This is ready, set, trade. This is every trade that we've done over the last two years. 83.28% win rate. And we have a 3.05 profit factor. So that's every strategy that we do, whether it's writing puts or iron condors or covered calls, or whether we're doing some type of calendar spread or iron condor, anything like that. So we have the performance. This is what we share with the members. We're not running this as a fund. We're just doing this like single contract trades. So we're not even optimizing for the size of the account or anything like that. So that's our performance. So this is what we try to communicate to everything. What's in the course? What's in the zero DTE course? Well, you can see this is the syllabus that we have. The advantage of zero DTE, we're going to talk about iron condors, how to set up each one of these, how to set up iron butterflies, how to do calendar spreads and all the techniques behind that, directional trades, how to do those. And then lastly, how to do decision making, not only using the charts, but also when you get in, when you get out. So everything we use through video and through PDF. And also what we're going to do is we're going to throw in member access to what we call the 10X Tribe, which is our free community that we share just about everything. So a lot of people are in this. We have, last time I looked, we have 1,600 people as part of this community now. So there's a lot of folks that you can bounce things off of. We put automated trade setups into here. We're do, publishing articles into here. People are talking and chatting in the chat room all the time. So it's a great little community that you can, you can bounce things off of, as well as ask me questions whenever you want to. Okay, so that's what's in the course. That's the member access. And then, so again, the link here for this is readyset.trade slash zero to get that discount. Just a quick note here, you can't do this from an iPhone because for us to put this in through the Apple store, we had to pay some ridiculous surcharge to this and it was gonna affect you know, everybody's price to that. So just do it through a browser if you can or a workstation and that'll be fine. So go into readyset.trade slash zero and I'll look forward to your questions. If anybody has any questions right now, let me know what they are. Okay, I'm reading some of the comments here. The third, third certainty in life is time decay. There's no question there. Standard deviations are not the same as pivot points, no. Yeah, Kirti, typically we don't run into PDT problems with this because rarely are we taking three trades over the course of the week. We're also looking into trading these through micro e-mini options. So the micro e-mini futures options contracts as well too, which are not regulated by the SEC. So we get away from the PDT rule. While purchasing the course that does not ask for the email, how would the course be delivered? It's really, it's through our platform here. So if we, if I bring up the platform, it's just through our, it's through our uh, 10X Tribe courses here. So you can see how this, this comes up. Now, I don't have a login on this, so I'm just showing you the, the course itself, but this is the way that you would access it. This is our platform. This is how we do everything. How long is this offer for? We're going to offer this uh, through this weekend, and then it'll go back to the 199. The other thing that you can do, guys, is you can go out to, uh, let's see if I have it here. You can just go out to elite.readyset.trade. If you just want to check us out, just go out to elite.readyset.trade, and then you can just troll around, and you can see what we're all about.
right? So you can just see what we're all about. It's kind of like going out to somebody's Facebook account and you can see what we have available, the resources that are out there. You can join for free. So that's elite.readyset.trade. That's for the free access. But if you want the special that we're offering for the zero DTE class, get that today. That's at readyset.trade slash zero. Let me type that in one more time here. Dave's got it. All right, thanks, Dave. Okay, guys, if you have any other questions, please uh, hook hook me up in the in the elite.readyset.trade site, or you can always send me an email at doc at readyset.trade. Thanks everybody for your time and your attention today. I hope uh, you're able to use some of, this, some of these uh, techniques and skills and start to get your own active income. Otherwise, I'll look forward to working with you guys. David, thank you very much for the time today. Hope that uh, comes in. It looks like we're right on time here at uh, 2.56. Yeah, that's perfect. So, so uh, for everyone out there who is not familiar with the uh, original history of timing research. Doc was actually the first guest on my first show on my first uh, event for timing research. So we had known each other for a few years at that time. And I sent him an email and said, uh, I'm thinking about doing this new series. Would you, would you like to be on? And he said, yes. So that was, uh, that was over seven years ago. So it's great to have him here for the Friendsgiving event. Yeah, it's it's great to be on this. So, but David's one of uh, David's one of the good guys that are in this business. There's many good guys <laughs> in the business. David's up right near the top. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So, all right. Thanks for being here, Doc. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, David. Bye now. <laughs>